Is it driving you nuts because your lawn care or landscaping company isn't showing up high enough in internet search results? Maybe you've been tinkering around yourself or even hired a SEO expert for your lawn care and landscaping company and they did some work but it's just not working. You're stuck. You're still only showing up in the second, fifth, maybe 20th page of Google. You want to fix the problem but you just don't know where to start. But I got some great tips for you today. Hey, what's up? It's Chad with Landscape Leadership. We help mid-sized lawn care and landscape companies all across the United States and Canada generate more local website traffic, which means tons of leads for their sales teams. Now, in our last video about SEO for landscapers and lawn care companies, I shared with you some of the top reasons why your website might not be ranking in search results. We talked about eight signals that tell Google if your website is a good search result. Now, if you haven't already watched this video, I will instruct you to go ahead and do that. You can click on the link up above or look in the description below for that video because if you don't watch that, you might be just a little bit confused by the SEO tips I'm gonna give you today. Now, as you watch this video on some SEO tips for landscapers and lawn care companies, I'm gonna ask you to do a couple things. If you like this video, make sure you click that button below to let me know. And check the description below and also watch for the links above because I'm gonna have links to other videos and resources and downloadable things that you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of to improve the SEO for your landscaping or lawn care company. And if you love lawn care and landscaping marketing videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel because we're gonna follow up in this series after this video with some really great practical, tactical tips and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get that video and get the notification when it comes available. So let's get started, shall we? In my last video, I talked about some of these ranking signals, meaning things that are tipping off Google to know that your website is actually a really, really great result when people are searching for answers to their question. We're gonna to talk today about some of these big impacts on SEO for landscapers and lawn care companies, and I'm gonna give you some tips on how to fix some of these problems. So as we go through this list, we're gonna start off first with the easier things to influence and change to improve SEO for lawn care and landscape companies. And some of these items you might wanna try on your own, uh, but as we get through the list, they're gonna get a little bit more time uh, involved and also require a little bit more expertise, so you might actually want to reach out for some professional help. Well, maybe not that kind of professional help. In the next video in this series, we're gonna talk about if you use professional help with SEO for your lawn care landscape company, how much should that cost? And if you're paying somebody, what you could or should be paying for and how to actually track to make sure that they're doing their job and not just giving you a fancy report each month. Now the first SEO improvement tip I'm gonna give you is this. This is going to really affect how you're showing up in local search results, specifically in the maps pack that'll be served up at the top of search rankings. It's this, fix and claim your Google My Business listing. If you don't already have one, make sure you claim it and verify it Make sure everything is completely filled out and correct. Everything from your business categories to hours, everything. Keep it exactly concise of how you want this to appear on your website and everywhere else online, which we'll get to in a minute. And when you get a chance, take some of your best photos and add that to this listing because people are going to end up on this profile and seeing examples of your work. Now, Google My Business is evolving with time and there's going to be coming some features and different places you can put more information. So make sure you stay up to date on what's going on in the Google My Business profile and make sure that you have all those pieces filled in. Now, the next way that landscaping companies and lawn care companies can improve SEO is closely related to my last tip. On Google My Business, you will see that your customers can leave you reviews. So over time, you wanna to strive to get over 100 reviews and have your rating be as close to five stars as possible. In order to do this, you're gonna need a purposeful strategy over the years to follow. If you check the description below, you're gonna see a link to an article that's gonna talk a little bit more about how you can get more positive online reviews for your lawn care or landscaping company. My next SEO tip is this. 
get your online directory straight. There are a bunch of places online where you can have a free listing, maybe even some with paid listings for your business. Make sure all the information on those directories is extremely consistent. Now, this helps Google to see that you are a legitimate business and it connects them to your local address. So set up as many of these directories as possible within reason and make sure that that information is consistent. Again, check the description below because I'm going to have another free resource for you to download to keep track of these directory listings. Make sure that you store your logins and passwords and make sure that this information is consistent. Another great tool and a tip that I'll give you is subscribe to a tool like Moz Local because what it does is it takes your Google My Business listing and pushes that out to a lot of these directories and corrects them and it also alerts you if there's some things it doesn't automatically correct so you know where you can go and make improvements. Also be sure to take advantage of all of the associations that you belong to. You might belong to some local chamber of commerces or you also might be members of NALP, ISA, or TCIA. Make sure that you set up your profiles on their website because it allows you to put your company name, address, sometimes even a link to your website, and those are also very good signals for Google to help you rank better. Next, make sure you have your social media profiles set up as well. If your company primarily services residential clients, make sure Facebook and Instagram is set up with all the information, again, as consistent as possible to connect to your website and the description of what you're all about. And if you are a business to business company, LinkedIn, maybe even Twitter might be some resources that you wanna make sure you're connected to. Now, as I said in my last video, social media is a great distribution tool for your content and pictures and things that you're doing as a company but it doesn't have a huge impact on your search ranking. But there is a, just a little bit of a sliver there that does matter, so make sure you can set these up. Now the rest of the factors and improvement ideas that I'm gonna to talk to you about today are gonna to require a lot of hard work. This is gonna be ongoing work over the months and even years to follow. So I'll caution you as we move forward. Ask yourself this question. What are you an expert at? I think for most of you, you're probably gonna say for lawn care or landscaping or maybe even trees. Are you an SEO expert? And even if you can figure these things out, is it the best use of your time or should you spend your time growing your business and working with your customers and your team members to really create a more healthy organization? Even if you end up not trying to do this yourself and you do hire an outside agency to improve the SEO for your lawn care or landscaping business, I want you to be sure that you understand what these things are so that you can hold your agency accountable that they're doing the right things. So a big task that has a huge impact on how you're showing up in search results is this. Fix your website. Seriously, it may be way more broken than you realize. It's not enough to just have a pretty website. There are a lot of different factors in the back end that influence search engine optimization. On-site signals are a huge signal to Google of whether you should show up in search results or not. There are a ton of things that need to be addressed. Make sure your website is first connected with Google Search Console so that Google can actually look at these elements and determine if you have them right or wrong. You should be looking at things like making sure your website is mobile friendly. Now, some of you are still rocking a mobile version of your website, and that's not what I'm talking about. These are not just as out of style as cargo pants. Seriously, they're basically man purse pants. But it's also a big black mark when Google looks at your website and understands that you don't really have a responsive design, meaning a website that changes no matter what type of device you're on. Another big factor is make sure your website is a secured connection. And the way that you can check this is when you pull up your website, look at the address up top in the browser. It should start with HTTPS, S meaning a secured connection. So someone can make sure that they can take your unsecured website and make it secured. That is a huge factor for Google. Also take a look at how long your website domain is registered for. The longer it's registered for, the more of a signal it sends to Google to say that this business is here to stay. So extend that agreement out five, maybe even 10 years. Then do some keyword research. Now you can't rank 
every page on your website in search results for every version of keyword phrases. So for each page on your website, make sure you choose a couple closely related search terms and make sure your page is optimized for those terms. Now the rest of the items I'm about to mention hinge on really good keyword research and picking the right combinations of keywords for each specific page on your website. Now there's all sorts of on-page elements that you should be checking. First off, what is the title of your page? If you look here in the search results, you will see that this is the main line that you're gonna see, the link that people will click on. And then some other elements to consider is what is the address of this page? What is the URL, as you can see here as well? And as we go through to the website page, what's going on in the page? What are the headings? What are the subheadings? What is the text on these pages saying? Are you using the keyword phrases in a natural way? Don't overdo it. Also, images are really important as well because they signal Google about what these images are about on this page too. So make sure you're naming these images very purposefully to match the keyword phrases that you're trying to rank for. Images also have an opportunity to have a description or some people call it an alt tag, which signals a search engine to give a little bit more information about what that image is for. Again, keep keywords in mind. Now, these improvements could mean a lot of work. It means that maybe you shouldn't just have one, five, 10, or even 20 pages on your website. Maybe you need a lot more than that. That's right. The number of pages on your website really matters. Check out the link below in the description. I have an article that's gonna speak a little bit more to this topic, but this leads me to my next SEO tip. Start blogging four to six times a month. Every time you write an article on your blog, it is a new page on your website. This means that you have more opportunities to rank for different keyword phrases. So while your services pages and different pages on your website might be ranking for those really obvious terms like lawn care services in your town, you could also use a blog post for an opportunity to rank for a completely different phrase, like how much does lawn care cost in your town? This is one of the primary reasons why we put so much focus on blogging for lawn care and landscape companies because it just provides dozens and dozens of opportunities to rank for different keyword phrases each year. If you want to find out what it takes to develop a killer lawn care landscaping blog, check out the video above and also the description below because I'm going to have another great resource for you. But blogging also has another great benefit that directly impacts SEO for landscaping and lawn care companies, which leads me to my next tip. Inbound links are a huge signal to Google that they should serve your website up in search results. So there's a couple ways you can go about this. Some agencies as part of their services might sell to you a link building campaign, meaning that they'll actually go out and they've created relationships with other websites that will link to your content or your pages on your website. But be careful because not all of these links are good. In fact, if you have a low quality link or a bad website linking to your website, it can actually hurt where you show up in search results. But you can also earn really great links. And one of the ways to do this is by developing a blog strategy that takes really important questions that people are asking and serving up really meaningful in-depth answers. It might be much easier to earn a great link if you have a really good article or even resources on your website that people will want to link to, which leads me to my next tip. For my next SEO tip, I wanna talk about another big signal and that is behavioral signals, meaning what are people doing? When they find one of your website pages or your blog articles in search results, are they clicking through? Because that's a big signal to Google if they've done their job. Not only are they clicking through, but what are they doing when they click through? Make sure the places people are getting to on your website are interesting and compelling and engaging. It's not just enough to show up in search results. If they end up clicking through to your website, what are they doing on your website anyway? Are they just reading that first page they found to and then bouncing? Because that's actually a negative signal to Google that maybe this wasn't the best result to serve up and they might drop you in search rankings if that's happening. Are they gobbling up content? Are they looking at a bunch of images? Are they going from one page to another, from one article to another? And most importantly, what are they doing as an end result on your website? 
even if they're not ready to purchase yet, ask for a quote or a consultation, are you giving anybody on your website something that might be of a value? You can do this a variety of different ways by developing different great resources that they can take advantage of. These could be tip sheets, they could be in-depth guides that discuss certain things like you know, a patio planning guide or how to go about the whole design process or even lawn care tips you know, to create the best lawn on the block. You could even develop interactive tools that let them play around your website. And they might have to fill out forms to get to those tools or if they are ready to reach out to you for a free quote or consultation, are they filling out a form? Meaning are they not just landing one page but they're going filling out a form, going to a thank you page, maybe even taking advantage of some other content. Those are all really great behavioral signals to Google that they've done their job. The big point is here, are you analyzing and looking at the facts? Are you looking at the data? What is the data saying about your click-through rates? What is it saying about the traffic coming to your website? And what are people doing? Or what are they not doing on your website? Now this could mean a lot of work. It means that there are a lot of things that should be happening on a month to month basis for maybe a year or more in advance. And then maybe sometimes people should come back and check on these things and see if they worked and if they didn't take other measures to make sure that they're improving SEO for landscaping and lawn care companies. This all points to should you hire a professional to help you? And if you hire a professional, are you paying them fairly and are you keeping them accountable for what they're actually supposed to be doing? This is why I would encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel because in our next video in this series, we're gonna be talking about how agencies charge for those types of services and how you can keep them accountable to make sure that you're really getting a good return on investment. So a question for you. Do you more now clearly understand how to actually improve SEO problems on your website and make it to show up better in search results? Do you also understand some of the things you should be doing off of your website to improve this as well? If you do, make sure you click that like button below and let me know that you appreciated all the tips in this video. And I know that I threw a ton of SEO tips at you today. So in the comments below, just tell me one of these things that you think you're gonna start on first. I hope that some of these SEO tips have really helped you and help you to make some really valuable future improvements to help you to start dominating in search results. Thanks a lot and have a really great day.